Welcome to Precision Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 35 of ASP.NET Grid View tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss about drilling down and displaying hierarchical data in an ASP.NET Grid View using Object Data Source Control. In part 34, we discussed about doing exactly the same thing using SQL Data Source Control. Please watch part 34 before proceeding with this video. In my SQL Server database, I've got three tables, TBL continents, TBL countries, and TBL cities. Now, the data that is present in these three tables, we want to retrieve that and display within grid view controls in an ASP.NET web application project. When the web form initially loads, we only want to display continents grid view. Once I select a continent, then all the countries belonging to that continent should be displayed in second grid view. Once I select a country, then all the cities belonging to that country should then be displayed within the third grid view control. Obviously, we need three grid view controls to achieve this. So let's flip to Visual Studio. Let's drag and drop three grid view controls onto our web form one, two, and three. Let's set the scheme to brown sugar. Let's do that for the second grid view control as well. And finally, for the third one. And we need three object data source controls as well. So one, two, and three. Now, to use object data source controls to retrieve continents, countries, and cities data, we need to create respective data access layers. OK, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's flip to Visual Studio. Right click on your project, add a class file. And let's call this continents data access layer.cs. And obviously here we'll be writing some ADO.NET code. So let's use uh, you know the ADO.NET namespaces, system.data, system.data.sql client, and system.configuration. All right. Now, to encapsulate continent information, we need a continent class. So let me actually copy and paste that code here, and then I'll explain what I mean. So here. I have this continent class. Why do we need this class? Basically to encapsulate the information that is present in this TBL continent table. I need that class, so which has got two properties, continent ID and continent name, both of them simple auto-implemented properties. And then within this continent data access layer class, I have the static method, which is get all continents. Look at the return type. It is list of continents. So this method is going to return a list of continent objects. OK, so what is this method doing? Pretty simple and straightforward ADO.NET code here. You know, we have a, an object of type list continent. We are using the configuration manager class to read the connection string from web.config file. And then we are using that connection string to create the SQL connection object. And then we are preparing our SQL command object. Notice the select command, select star from TBL continents. We are going to retrieve all the rows from TBL continents. And then loop through each row. And then you know convert you know the column values into the properties of that object, and then finally add that object to the list and return the list. Okay, so pretty simple and straightforward ADO.NET code. So continent data access layer is done. Along the same lines, now we need to create country data access layer. So let's call the class file as country data access layer. So right click on your project, add the class. And let's name it country data access layer.cs. And obviously, to encapsulate you know, the country, um, you know, country ID, country name, and continent ID columns, we need a respective class. And obviously, within this country data access layer, we need a method to retrieve the data and return it back. And to speed things up, I have the type. So let me copy and paste that here. And then I will explain the code. OK. so. But then here, obviously, we need ADO.NET namespaces as well. So let's copy the namespaces system.data, system.data.sql client, and system.configuration. OK, so within our country data access layer, we have a country class, which is used to encapsulate country information. So we have three properties here, country ID, country name, and continent ID, because that's what we want to display within the second grid view control in the country's grid view control. And then within country data access layer, again, you know, the same kind of ADO.NET code here. Here, look at the method. It's going to return, you know, list of a list of country objects. All right. Now, if you look at this method, it's taking in a parameter, continent ID. Why is that required? Because when I select a continent, you know, for the select con 
for the selected continent we want to retrieve the row you know the countries that's why you know I have included a method which is going to take in a continent ID and then return countries that match that continent ID so if you look at this code again here it's pretty straightforward ADO.NET code so reading your connection string preparing your SQL connection object the important thing is the SQL command select star from TBL countries where continent ID is equal to at continent ID so we are using a parameterized query there we need to supply a value for the SQL parameter and to do that we are creating a parameter object here and look at the value the value is nothing but the parameter that is coming into this method okay we'll later see how to actually use this method so we are adding the parameter to this command object opening the connection executing the command and then you know we are creating the country object populating respective properties and then adding that to the list finally returning the list back okay so we are done creating country data access layer finally we need to create a city data access layer so let's name the file as city data access layer.cs so let's add that to our project So city data access layer.cs, click add. And again to encapsulate city information, we need city class and a static method to return the list of cities. So let me copy this code, paste it into the city data access layer file. And obviously again if you look at the city data access layer first, let's get rid of these uh, compilation errors by copying those namespaces that are required. okay so if you look at this class again pretty straightforward you have city ID city name and country ID auto implemented properties within that city class and then look at the uh, you know get cities by country ID method so obviously when I select a country then I want to get the cities by country ID so obviously we need a parameter of country ID there which we are passing in into this method so whatever is the country ID that you pass in the rows that match that country ID will then be ret uh, returned so the important thing to note here is the query select star from TBL cities where country ID is equal to at country ID you know SQL parameter for this SQL parameter we need to supply a value which is nothing but this method parameter okay and then we are adding that parameter to the command object open the connection execute the command loop through each row and then you know populate the city object properties add that to the list of cities and then finally return that list back okay so pretty straightforward three data access layer uh, class files alright so now we need to build our project so that these classes are compiled and then let's flip to our web form so now we need to configure these object data source controls to use those you know methods that we have just written so object data source one control we want this to talk to our you know continent data access layer class and if you remember this continent dot I mean continent data access layer this is actually present in namespace demo okay so let's flip to our web form let's configure this so what's our business object demo dot continent data access layer okay I click next and then we need to specify our select method which is nothing but get all continents click finish and now we need to associate this with our you know grid view one control so choose your data source which is object data source one and we want to enable selection so that shows the select button there alright so we are done configuring first grid view control now let's go ahead and configure second object data source control so configure data source now in the second I mean we want to use the second object data source control to retrieve countries information so let's choose our business object which is going to be demo dot country data access layer and within this country data access layer we have got a method look at this get countries by continent and notice this this method has got a parameter continent ID of type integer so obviously if you have to call that method you will need to supply a value for that continent ID so where is that going to come from let me click next and and see what's gonna happen okay so now you know the wizard has detected that this method has got uh, a parameter for which we need to supply a value so where is that value going to come from it's going to come from the first grid view control so a control on this web form is going to supply a value for that parameter so what is our parameter source it's going to be a control so select your control 
and then your control ID which is grid view 1. So continent ID you know the value for that parameter is going to come you know from this grid view 1 dot selected value property. Click finish. Now let's associate object data source 2 with our grid view 2 control. Okay and we want to enable selection there as well. And finally we want to configure our object data source 3 control to talk to our city data access layer. So demo dot city data access layer click next again this method has got a country ID parameter for which we need to supply a value so where is the value going to come from from another control on this web form whose ID is grid view 2 so country ID is equal to grid view 2 dot selected value click finish finally associate your grid view control with object data source 3 control and we are done now when we run this we get a runtime error but we'll see how to solve that Okay, so when the web form initially loads, you know, we expect the countries to be, continents to be displayed, but we actually get a runtime error. Look at that. Data keys must be specified on grid view 1 before the selected data keys can be retrieved. Now, we have discussed about this in the previous session as well. So, you know, basically what it means is if you look at country data access layer, for example, you know, this has got a method called get countries by continent and we are passing in a continent ID and where is the you know the value for this parameter coming from it's coming from the grid view one dot selected value property now if you want to use that property obviously you need to set the data key names property okay within the grid view control so for grid view one we need to set data key names property to continent ID column And similarly, we need to do the same thing for grid view 2. So for grid view 2, the data key is going to be country ID. I mean, at the moment, we don't have to do it for the third grid view control because we, are not, we have not enabled selection. But it's always a good practice to set your keys. So I'm going to set that as well for the third grid view control as well data key names is equal to in this case it's going to be city ID alright so with this change it should work as expected when the web form initially loads it should show the continents only once I select a continent then it should show the respective countries within that continent once I select a country then it should show the cities alright on this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C-Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.